Well, good morning. morning. Welcome to Saluda Baptist Church. I'm Pastor Jeff. In case I haven't met you, I see some new faces out here, which I love, love, love to see. You know, and and I'm tempted. i got to say something. I'm going to be real selfish for about two seconds. I'm tempted to say Happy Father's Day, because for me, it's Father's Day. I've got a pew full of family right over here. And that's just awesome. My heart is full this morning. My heart is full. But you know, the, the video that we just watched is it, something that's been on my heart uh, so much lately. Uh, in fact, I had a conversation yesterday uh, at a little birthday party that somebody had, uh, and the person asked me, how do I know that God is in control? How do I know? I've got questions about what's going on. We're going to talk about that some this morning. We need to always remember that God is in complete control at all times and just look to him, lean upon him, trust him in all that we do. So this morning, you know, I've been, I've been using a phrase of words here lately as we start our service. You know, I'd ask you just to relax, let down your guard, and let God be real to you this morning. Just experience him, him this morning as we're here to worship. But I do have one other request this morning. I would ask you, as we're in prayer, remember a couple of families. We lost a couple of family members this week, back to back. If you would remember the uh, family of Mr. Charlie Rents, he passed uh, Friday morning, early in the morning. Uh, I've been asked to convey to you that if you'd like to visit the family, they are taking visitors at the house over the next couple days. Services are pending. Uh, they're going to be later in the week sometime. It'll be a private ceremony just because of everything going on. But also, the family of Beverly Grice. She passed Saturday morning, and uh, her services are tomorrow afternoon. That also is going to be a private service. But please, please, please be in prayer for those family, families. I know they're hurting right now. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much. I praise your holy name for all that you've done. Father, I thank you so much for the privilege to be in your house this morning. Father, I thank you for the privilege of living in this great country, Father. We celebrate our independence this week. And Father, we should celebrate our freedoms that we enjoy as a nation. We should celebrate the freedoms that we have uh, to live a life free of persecution, free to worship you, Father, as our God, our only God. Father, this morning as we come to be before the throne, we just ask that you would hear our prayer, hear our songs of worship. Father, allow, allow us to experience your presence right here with us this morning. Allow us to worship you freely and to glorify you and bless you through all that we do, all that we say, all that we sing. These things I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you please stand?
come behind that. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, glad to have all our regular vis uh, members and our visitors as well, and we welcome you here and glad to have this uh, full bench almost over here, the McCartney family. And, uh, you know, if you hadn't, I know Kelly's got plenty of food fixed to feed this crowd, and if you hadn't fixed lunch, just go on out. I'm sure there'll be plenty for you, so uh, I know she'd love to see that us showing up out there. But anyway, but anyway uh, let's go to our announcements for the day. Uh, just to uh, give you a little bit of information, the, w the live women's live conference in that's going to be in Greenville. I know some of you have uh, signed up for that. It has been canceled for this year, so uh, we'll have to look for forward to that for another time. Uh, don't forget Wednesday night's Defense of the Faith coming up. Uh, please join us on that. We have a good crowd. Uh, we can use more. We've got plenty of room in here for you. Uh, next Sunday, uh, Lord's Supper. <coughs> And uh, don't worry about it. It's going to be handled in the little packets. Uh, if you're concerned about that, we're going to handle it uh, very judiciously and carefully. And, and uh, so don't worry about that. Uh, if you're concerned about it, uh, nobody will handle it except you. And, and the one that's handled to you, and we'll be fully protected. So don't worry about that. Uh, the Isaac's Christmas show uh, coming up. If you've signed up for that, please get your check to the uh, church office. Uh, the church has already paid for the tickets. And if you order T-shirts, they're here. Of course, we got Vacation Bible School uh, coming up. I uh, still need some volunteers for that. Sir Saluda, we need a uh, foreman to lead the adult team. So uh, if you're thinking uh, that you uh, want to participate in that, uh, just uh, let the church office know. Uh, just to mention something maybe on the horizon to you, uh, you know, uh, during this COVID crisis, of course, many businesses have suffered, but also a lot of our churches have suffered too, especially our smaller churches. Uh, we've been looking for ways to support some of these small churches, and uh, just to let you know, uh, stay tuned in the coming weeks, we're going to uh, let you know of uh, maybe a project that our church can take on in supporting a small church to help them survive during this time. And we'll keep you, keep you in tune on that a little bit later when we get more information. But uh, maybe an opportunity to give financially, maybe an opportunity to do a little work there, just whatever their needs are. As soon as we find out what their needs are, uh, we don't want to let our, any of our churches that uh, have uh, had such a hard time during this uh, crisis to uh, go by the wayside. Uh, any prayer requests right now? I have one from uh, Jim Moore, his brother Randy's facing surgery, and I want to keep him in his prayers. Of course, we want to remember the uh, uh, Mr. Charlie Prince family and, and, and the Bryce family as well. Any others? Brian. 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 Put my son, grandson, Kobe Hendricks on the prayer list. Kobe, uh, Carlene's grandson. Uh, is that MCG? Is it MCG? I'm not really sure of what's What's and uh, just still trying to figure out what's going on with him, right, Colleen? Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other prayer requests? Yeah, the, the baby uh, baby infant. Uh, still remember her. Trey and Allie got good news. They're uh, going to be, uh, they are parents, I guess, at this point. So uh, that's a wonderful thing. We're uh, all happy for that. We know how long they've been waiting on that. Anything else? Julie Long Yost. Okay, yeah. Lost her father in law. Okay. Any more? Okay. Uh, I want to go to our scriptures first, and uh, you know, this Saturday we're going to be celebrating the 4th of July, you know, our country's birthday. Uh, you know, it's a good week to be in the, in the fireworks business, and not so good a week to be a pig. You know, there'll probably be a good many of them on, on, the, on, the, uh, on the barbecue rack this weekend. But, you know, the situation our country's in right now, uh, I think you know, we, we can look forward to a little bit of different celebration this year. I'm not sure how it's going to be, you know, whether it'll be more 
built up protests or what, you know, but, you know, we're kind of, it's kind of an uncertain time with all the uh, protests and the civil unrest we have in our country. And, you know, we really just don't know what to expect. But I want to go to our scripture. First uh, Peter 2.16 says this, Live as free men, but do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. Live as servants of God. You know, we, we live in a blessed country because we are able, as Americans, to, to uh, express our views free, freely. Um, this is a right that so many people have, have died for and have sacrificed uh, over the years. But, you know, these protesters, have, I think, have gone beyond that, in, in, in my opinion. You know, I think they're a, a group of evil men that want to uh, destroy our way of life and are using the protest to advance uh, misguided agendas that they have. You know, there's always a fringe group that wants to take, take uh, charge of a situation, and, and the protests are valid, no doubt about it. We want to see justice done in this country for everyone. But, you know, I think sometimes it's, it's gone too far. Uh, do we live in a perfect nation? Now, you know, no, none of us claim to live in a perfect nation, nor will we ever. I don't care how many protests and how many changes we make in our government. You know, we're never going to be perfect. There'll, be, there'll no, never be any perfect society this side of heaven. But we still are the country that most people want to come to. We are still the country that the world looks to to uh, protect freedom and pr promote man's freedom throughout the world. And God has blessed this country. Second Corinthians, uh, Second Chronicles 7, 14 says this, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will, will I hear them, I will hear them from heaven, will forgive their sin and heal their land. You know, I think our very survival as a country depends on this verse. It depends on us Christians leading the way, turning toward God, praying for our nation daily, and asking him to forgive us for the wrongs we've done, and, and being understanding toward each other, and ask him to heal our nat nation. And unless we lead the way, we're, we're, our country is probably doomed to fail. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for this time together. We thank you that we have the ability in this country to come together and freely and worship as we please. We ask that you be with those mentioned this morning. We ask that you be with those who are suffering from illness, those who are facing surgery, with those who are uh, in doctor's care that have not figured out what's wrong. We know that you have all the answers and we just ask that you will provide those and you will put your healing hand on those. Those in our faith community here, Lord, who have lost loved ones, we just ask your blessings on them and your comforting arms. We ask that you put them around them in this time of grief and that you will uh, give, show them the hope that you give all of us through the uh, love and that we have through your son, Jesus Christ. And Lord, just be with us today as we carry on the service. Be with Jeff as he brings the message in the coming minutes and that we will have open hearts and the mind receive what you, uh, the blessing that you have from us. We we'll pray all these things in Jesus' name for his sake. Amen. Stand.
pray. Heavenly Father, we are just so thankful to be here in your house, Lord. We are so thankful for what you do for us each and every day and how you take over and look after us and watch over us. And Heavenly Father, we just want you to look over this tithe and offering that, we, that you bring in today, that we may be able to use it to your great and wonderful world, Lord. And bless us that we take and do it and use it as you see fit. And this we ask and this we pray. Amen.
one thing before I get started. I uh, blew a kiss to somebody a second ago, and Gary, I saw you smiling when I did that. It wasn't to you. <laughs> I just want to clarify. I mean, you're in the line of fire, but it wasn't you. I love you, but it wasn't you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for the blessings you've given us. I thank you so much for uh, just everybody being here this morning in your house to worship you this morning. Father, I pray now as we come to the time to, to hear from your word, Father, that you would just allow us to set aside all distractions, to truly focus upon you, to hear you clearly, Father, to hear your words clearly as they apply so strongly to us today in the world that we live in. Father, I pray. I pray that you would hide me behind the cross at this very moment, that your words would be spoken, that folks would hear directly from you and not me. Father, these things I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, you know, there was a time when uh, Kelly and I lived in Texas, and both of our children lived here. And uh, there was a phrase that I used to use when I'd get to be around them. There was a phrase I used consistently. And when, when we would show up or they would come to us, I would say, I can breathe again. I can relax, right? Because my kids, my children, my family was surrounding me. And, and that's when I can get comfortable as a dad. Dads know that, you know, when your kids are away, you can't really relax. You're always being mindful of things going on in their lives. And, you know, it, it's just something that, that I've always been mindful of, but today, I can breathe. I can breathe, and I'm very relaxed. Now, my world changes. Tomorrow morning, 7.45, but I trust in the Lord, right? He's gonna take my precious family back to Texas, and they're gonna be okay. I know they're gonna be okay, and Dad's gonna be okay too. He's a big blubbering baby sometimes, but he's going to be okay. I rest easy knowing that the Lord has my family in his hands wherever we are. We don't have to be together. Wherever we are, the Lord has my family in his hands, and I rest easy in that. Now, what's interesting is when I say I rest easy, in today's world, there's, there's not a lot of folks saying we rest easy. It's a troubling place that we live in right now, that video that we opened up with. Uh, it talked a lot about the turmoil that we live in today. We've got this virus that uh, just won't let go. We've got death from the virus and death from other things. We've got folks losing jobs left and right, getting jobs back and then losing them again. We got fighting, we got protesting, we got punching each other out for no reason. And yesterday, yesterday I saw where a, a pastor, a fellow pastor friend of mine, who lives in California, uh, right by his house on a hill, there's a cross, it's a monument. And folks wanted to tear it down. I don't rest easy seeing that, but I do know my Lord is in complete control. You know, it, it, it hurts my heart when I look at the nation that we live in right now, knowing, knowing that we're fixing to celebrate our independence this Saturday, as Brad mentioned earlier. 244 years of independence that we celebrate, independence and freedoms. Freedoms from England, right? If you haven't read your history books, young people, freedom from England and the taxation that we had, remote control of government that they forced upon us, 
our freedom to be able to go and do as we please as a nation. You know, that was freedom from, but there's also freedom for. Freedom for us to be able to enjoy a life here in this great nation. Freedom for us to be able to explore where life may lead us into jobs that we want and education that we desire, to make a decent living, to be happy, and most importantly, to worship God. That's a freedom that we enjoy in this nation, to worship God freely as we choose to do that. You know, to worship God seems like a lost phrase, a lost mindset that folks have in this nation, to worship God. And it makes me wonder, as we sit here day by day, when is God going to come back? When is he going to show his wrath in this world that we live in? When is he going to return and call us home so we may join him in his kingdom? Well, it's interesting because I, I say this all the time. We can find every answer to every question in God's word. And this is another great example because that question, that very question was asked of Jesus Christ. When will we see the kingdom of God? And he gave a very specific answer to us. And that's where I want us to read this morning. That's where I want us to study. Because I know, I believe it is on everybody's heart. Lord, when are you coming back? Now, I would ask you, if you have your Bibles, and I hope you do, please turn to the Gospel of Luke. That's where we're going to be hanging out this morning. Gospel of Luke, chapter 17. And while you're turning there, let me give you some very brief background. You see, the Gospels, they tell us about the life of Jesus Christ. The Gospel of Luke tells us about his birth, his divine nature that he has. They, it tells us about his preparation for ministry. It tells us about his ministry in Galilee and then his ministry on the way to Jerusalem, his ministry in Jerusalem. It tells us about the trials and the persecution and that he was nailed to a tree, buried, died, but he rose again and he ascended to be at the right hand of God. We read all of that in the Gospel of Luke. But he also, in chapter 17, takes this moment to teach those following him, the disciples and others around him. He's teaching about forgiveness. He's teaching about giving. He's teaching about giving thanks. And in this one moment, in this one moment, there is a question asked by the Pharisees. And that's what we're going to look at. Chapter 17, verse 20 through 37 is where we're going to read this morning. It says, Now, when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, See here or see there. For indeed, the kingdom of God is within you. Then he said to the disciples, the days will come when you will desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you will not see it. And they will say to you, look here or look there. Do not go after them or follow them. For as the lightning that flashes out of one part under heaven shines to the other part under heaven, so also the Son of Man will be in his day. But first, he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. And as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be also in the days of the Son of Man. They ate, they drank, they married wives. They were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot, they ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even so, it will be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day, he who is on the housetop and his goods are in the house. Let him not come down, take them away. And likewise, the one who is in the field, let him not turn back. Remember Lot's wife. Whoever seeks to save his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life will preserve it. I tell you that in the night there will be two men in one bed, and the one will be taken and the other will be left. Two women will be grinding together, and one will be taken and the other one left. Two men will be in the field, one will be taken and the other one left. And they answered and they said to him, Where, Lord? And he said to them, Wherever the body is, the eagles will be gathered together. It's a fascinating read, 
as we look through this because we see the question that's asked by the Pharisees. When will we see the kingdom of God? It's a very straightforward question and an interesting one. But what I find more fascinating is you have one question with two answers that are provided. One question with two answers that are provided to two, two different sets of people. He first turns and looks to the Pharisees and says, The kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, See here or there. For indeed, the kingdom of God is within you. A very straightforward answer. You know, it's, it, it's fascinating with the Pharisees if, if you think about them asking the question. You see, the Messiah was right in front of them as they asked, when will we see the kingdom of God? And his answer was, it's among you already. His answer was, I'm in your presence. His answer was that it should be in your heart. You should see me. You should experience me. But they didn't. The, the, tragic, uh, the tragedy of this question that they asked is that they were studying so hard trying to find out when the end was going to come, when the kingdom of God was going to come, that they couldn't see the Messiah right in front of them. You see, they were looking for a political answer. They were looking for a political king, if you will, a change of heart for Israel to regain its strength within the world, to be the new kingdom of God. They weren't looking spiritually at who was right in front of them. They weren't experiencing spiritually the, the moment with the Messiah, the intimacy that they could have experienced right then. But don't you find it fascinating then that Jesus turns and looks, and at least in my eyes he does, and looks at the disciples, and he gives them a secondary answer. If you look at his answer to them, he says, days will come when you desire to see the days of the Son of Man. He knows that they believe in Jesus Christ. He knows that they understand somewhat about the kingdom of God. He says, you will look for the, the days of the Son of Man, but you won't see it. He's telling them right then and there, they will not experience the second coming of Jesus Christ. But he also warns them of false teachers, and false teachers that we need to understand and look at as well. He says, you're going to see folks that will say, look here or look there. They're telling them that the Messiah is right here and he's come back. He says, don't follow them. They're false teachers. That's not the truth that you're seeing. And that's a message to us today as we go out into this world, as we see these so-called prophets that declare uh, that God is coming by X date or God is going to be here. Jesus will return on this date. They don't know. Jesus told us that point blank that no one knows except for the Father when he will return. He says, do not go after them or follow them for the lightning that flashes out of one part of the, under the under heaven shines to the other part under heaven his point is you will know when I return it won't be a secret the entire world will know and experience my return when it occurs and then he reemphasizes but I must suffer and be rejected he's telling them that he's going to suffer be nailed to the cross and die and depart you see he has to go away before he returns that's his point right here he has to go away before he can return. But then Jesus goes on to tell them about a couple of stories. I, I, I love the teaching of Jesus. He says, as it was in the day of Noah, so it will be also like the days in the Son of Man. They ate, they drank, they mar married wives, and they were given into marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, as it was in the days of Lot, they ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, uh, they, planted they built. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone. You see, there's two different warnings, two different stories, two different examples of what he's trying to bring about and for them to understand the assuredness, if you will, of the return of Jesus Christ and the judgment, the wrath that's going to occur on those that don't believe. He gives us the example of Noah. And both of these are just so fascinating. The example of Noah. Noah built the ark. Now, does anybody have any idea how long it took him to build the ark? Right? In my mind, it was always short. As I read it, he built it. A couple days, it was done. Or maybe a couple months. I mean, it was fast, right? He had Home Depot he could go to. No, he did. If you think about the ark and the size, and you do your study to understand how long it took him to build the ark, the estimates are somewhere between 70 to 75, maybe 80 years. Some say extreme of 120. It was a long time. The point to understand there is people knew what was going on. Noah was sharing that, that God's wrath was going to come down upon them. They had time to accept God. They had time to change their ways. They had time to repent of their sinful ways. 
but they still reject it up until the moment that Noah got onto the ark. He and his family, eight of them in total, got onto the boat. Everybody else perished. They had plenty of time. The judgment of God came. Everybody else carried on doing what they were doing. Then we flip over to Lot, and we understand about Lot being in Sodom. Not a desirable place to, to be. In fact, Sodom was such a horrid place. The lustfulness that occurred there was just disgusting to God. And God rained down his wrath upon Sodom. And Lot and his family were able to escape. They left Lot and his wife and his two daughters. All four should have made it. But only three did. Because Lot's wife turned back and looked. Turned back and looked. Doesn't say why. Doesn't say anything about why. She just turned back and looked. And something happened. But before we get to that, Jesus says in that day who is on the housetop and his goods are on the house, let him not come down and take him away. Likewise, the one who is in the field, let him not turn back. And then he says, remember Lot's wife. He's telling us that yes, we'll be carrying on our life. Yes, Jesus is coming back. We're not going to know when. But when it occurs, don't go back. Don't look back. Don't try to go protect your household. Don't try to do anything else. Remember Lot's wife. She looked back. Now, we don't understand why, but it's probably one of two reasons. She either looked back desiring what she left, or maybe she looked back trying to help somebody else to come with. That wasn't her choice. That wasn't her option. She was to leave and never look back. And because of her disobedience, she suffered. She became a pillar of salt. She lost her salvation in that moment when she couldn't let go of her past. We have no business looking at our past. We need to look forward to Jesus Christ in everything that we do and look forward to our salvation in Jesus Christ and everything that we do. The past doesn't matter. That's what he's telling us is the past doesn't matter. He says, remember Lot's wife. And then he gives us a great word. Whoever seeks to save his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life will preserve it. We can do nothing to get our salvation. This is something he taught in Luke 9, 24. If you flip back and look at that, he tells us that we can't save ourselves. We must look to Jesus Christ and allow him to save us. He goes on with three more examples in the end. He says, I tell you that in the night there will be two men in one bed. One will be taken and the other one left. Two women will be grinding uh, grain, if you will, in the mill. Uh, one will be taken, the other one left. Two men will be in the field. One will be taken, the other one left. Taken, taken, taken. If you look at taken, you could, you could take one of two positions on that. Either taken in a positive, they were taken away from what is going on, and the one that's left is, is the negative, or one that's taken, maybe they're going to wrath. Now, I'll tell you, if you look at this, you have to understand in the theme of everything that's being written, taken means good. It's good. You're taken out of the situation, just like Noah was taken out and Lot was taken away from the wrath that occurred by God. And so one was taken and one was left. The point is that as we live our life and we go out into this world, the day will come of the rapture. It is assured. It's in God's word. There's no way to avoid it. The, the day of rapture will occur, and on that day, there will be those that will be taken away, taken up into the clouds with Jesus Christ, and there will be those that are left behind. Heaven help those that have never accepted Jesus Christ, because they will be left to face the tribulation and all the things that God will allow to happen. Now, it's fascinating, too, as you look at this, you know, we tend to, to keep the disciples in lofty positions. They were the, the most closest friends and, and followers of Jesus Christ. And, and in my mind, they knew most everything. They, they, they took it in really quickly. But this is such a great example of how they didn't really understand what Jesus was saying fully. They said, they answered. The disciples answered and said, where? Where, Lord? Where will this happen? And Jesus says to them, Wherever the body is, the eagles will be gathered together. I think it's, I, I love it when the Lord places something right in front of us on, on days that I'm preaching certain messages. I was driving this morning, just left the house with my family in, in, in my truck. We were packed in there really tight. And we didn't get a block away, although I don't think on a, a block really counts on dirt roads. We, were, we weren't far away. We didn't get to the first turn, so we weren't far away. And there was a whole uh, flock, I guess, my flock of birds, of, of, of uh, I just lost my words here, buzzards. 
whole flock of buzzards right there in the road. What do you think was right there with them? Something dead. I don't know what it was. It's something dead right there. That's what Jesus is saying. It's going to be so obvious when I return. It'll be like the eagles or the buzzards flocking together. You will know what's going on the day that I return. You will know. He's given us two points in here. One is about the lightning. Everybody's going to know, and he says, you'll see it. You'll know by the, the flock of the buzzards right there. It's obvious what's going to happen. You know, th this message, this point today, Jesus' return is certain. We don't need to focus on the when. We don't need to focus on the where. We just need to know and be assured that Jesus is going to be re returning. And we need to be ready. We need to be ready. Think about all those outside of the ark. They had plenty of time. Those that were in Sodom, they had plenty of time, but they made a choice. It is a choice to follow Jesus Christ. It's a choice not to follow Jesus Christ. Now today, my hope and prayer is, if you heard this message and heard God's word, the message has been clear or obvious to you. If, I want you to replay. You know how sometimes they back up in a movie and play what you've already seen and give it back to you? We watched this video about all the turmoil that's going on in the world, the virus, the death, the job loss, everything is negative, protest, fighting, left and right, but it said at the end of it, but God, God is still in control. Likewise, we sang this, this song, Days of Elijah. Have you ever looked up the story of Days of, Days of Elijah to understand what it's about or how it was written? I love this song, right? I can't do what Kate was doing. By the way, I love the fact that she was up. Oh, there she is. I love the fact that she was up here. So I might even blow her a kiss too, Gary. <laughs> Don't you go running over there. <laughs> Days of Elijah was written by a man uh, by the name of Robin Mark. He's from Ireland. He's a worship leader. And he was uh, at church on a particular Sunday. And he, the, the night before, it was at the end of the year, he had watched the year in review. You know, the end of the year, the TV stations always do the year in review. They tell you all the things that happen in sports, politics, or whatever it may be. And he'd watched, and it was 1994, and they had, um, I don't want to try to pronounce all these things correctly, but uh, they had the Rwandan uh, 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 Civil War, and they had over a million people that were killed. They also had a ceasefire that was happening in Ireland. They had a lot of turmoil that was going on. And his mindset was, is God really in control? And, and he went to church the next day, and he was still pondering this. And he goes to the first service, and it was still on his mind. And they had two services. So after the first service, he went into the kitchen of the church and started praying. And he wrote this song in literally about 15, 20 minutes. And then they went out into church, he shared it with the pastor, and they sang that song in the second service. And they were celebrating the turmoil that was going on, but God is still in control. He's coming in the cloud, right? He's coming down. He's coming to, he's, we know he's coming. The second return. Even the battle hymn, the, the other song we sang, what was it, Bill? Battle hymn of Republic. Republic. It talks about the assuredness that God, Jesus, is returning. There's a theme that we have today, and we need to carry it forward with us. You see, there is all kinds of turmoil that's going on in this world. There's so much negativity right now. But the thing we have to lean upon is that God is absolutely in control of every moment. And better than that, Jesus is returning. Right? So we have no fear. We have no fear. There's a song I love out there right now. It's kind of an upbeat song. I'm not going to try to sing it here in church because I would pull a muscle or something with this one. It's called Bulletproof. Bulletproof. I think it's based on Ephesians 6. We're talking about the full, the full armor of God. When you have the full armor of God on, you're protected. Nothing can hurt you whatsoever. If you're taken out of this world, you're taken to be with Jesus in heaven. I've got no fear whatsoever. Not whatsoever. And my prayer, my prayer to you this morning is that you develop that posture, that you keep that in mind. I mean, you don't want to walk and try to hurt yourself or do anything that, that drastic, but we have no fear of this world. There's a lot of negative going on. We may or may not be able to change anything that's happening. People talk about the new normal. I don't know. The only normal I want is what's in this book. The, the rest of the normal, I don't care. 
Let's live our life focused on Jesus without looking back. Let's remember Lot's wife and focus on Jesus Christ in all that we do. We need to be a Noah. We need to be an Ezekiel. We need to be uh, an Elijah. We need to share the righteousness, the, the love of Jesus Christ with each and every person that's out there. Of all places yesterday, and I'm going to catch Randy and CJ off guard here for a second, but I'm not going to use a name. At the birthday party yesterday, I did what granddads do. I stood like this for about two hours, right? Not really talking. If Randy needed something, I helped her. But most of the time, I just stood over in the corner. Because, I, I mean, they're playing games and they're doing what they're doing. But granddad doesn't need to be involved with all that. But there was a young man that walked up to me, somebody I hadn't seen in probably two years. And I asked how he's doing. And he said, he's so polite, he said, How, how's life with you? I said, man, since I've seen you, things have changed. I don't work at the other place anymore. I surrendered to the ministry. I went back, to, I went to seminary. I'm preaching full time. I gave all that up. I'm preaching full time. He goes, what? I said, yeah. I said, it's awesome. I said, my life has changed so much for the better. I just love everything that I'm doing. He said, you know, it wasn't that long ago. I broke up with my girlfriend. And she said that I need to get closer to God. I said, well, CJ, come here for a second. Come here. Because now I'm going to replay it for, for the rest of my family. He said, I need to be closer to God. And so I did this. I said, come here. Let's talk. And we went over to the other corner and talked about, that's all I need. <laughs> we had a conversation about getting closer to Jesus Christ. What's that? I'll, yeah, that's true. Bill says I can't use the name and example like I did him one Wednesday night. The point is, it doesn't matter where you're at. People out there are looking for hope. People are looking for hope in this dreaded world that we live in. It's up to us. You know what? Part of the blame that we have as a church, we have blame as a church for the way the world is acting right now because we are not being vocal enough. We're not sharing the gospel as we should. We're not looking for opportunities to share who Jesus Christ is with anybody and everybody that we can. Who would have thought at a birthday party for four-year-olds that I could share the gospel with somebody? But I did, and I loved it, and I think he loved it too. He's supposed to call me this week, and we're going to ch uh, chat about it. That's what we're called to do, to share the gospel, to go out and be that, the, the, the living Bible to all that we can. Let's not worry about what's going on in the world. Let's not get caught up in all the dread and dreariness. Let's, let's share the hope that we have with others. Would you join me in prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much. Father, I thank you so much for the truth that we can find in your word, Father. I thank you for this great message, this story that we find in, in, in Luke's gospel. Father, where he gives us such a great example of times in the past, but he also... Father, also allows us to focus and, and hear those words, remember Lot's wife. Father, not to look back, but to look forward, to look forward to the hope that we have, the assurance that we have that you are coming back for your children. Father, the hope that we have is that we are bulletproof, as that song says, Father. We put on the full armor of God, and we, we don't have to worry about this world at all. Father, this morning, I just pray that you would be with each and every person here this morning. Father, perhaps there's somebody here that doesn't know you as their Savior. Father, my hope, my prayer is that you would work in a mighty, mighty way. Stir their hearts this morning. Father, stir their hearts. Father, convict their hearts so that they too would, could leave, leave the dreadedness of this world, that they could turn to you and find the hope that is only found in you. Father, I pray for those, Father, that maybe have turned away, lost their way, like this young man that I talked to yesterday. He knows the Lord, but he's just been caught up in the world. And Father, I just pray that you would be with those people this morning. Father, allow them to repent, guide them to repent. Father, lead them to repent and turn away from the sins of this life. Father, allow them to just gaze upon the cross to see your glory, to see your love, to experience you like never before. Father, I pray for those perhaps that are looking for a new church. 
Father, we're a Bible teaching, Bible preaching church. And I just pray that if, if they're led here, Father, that you'd, you'd lead them right in. Father, I pray that you would be with each and every person. I just pray that you'd move in a mighty, mighty way. Heal those hearts that are broken. Guide those hearts that are seeking. These things I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you please stand? y'all for being here this morning. I got a little lively up there, I know, but I, when I get start talking about the Lord, I can't help but get a little spirited, a little lively. That's just what I do, right, Bob? That's right. All right, as long as you're okay with it. He, he was bragging about being in the front row a little while ago, and I said, let's get right here, because this is the real spit zone in, the, in, in that row. <laughs> I'm picking on you. You know I love you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for the blessings that you've given us. Father, I thank you for each and every person here just warms my heart to be among my church family. Father, it warms my heart to be with my family this morning. And I just pray 
I pray for your hedge of protection around each and every person here. Father, I just pray that you would lead and guide us throughout this life. Father, lead and guide and protect us throughout this life. Father, allow us in everything that we do to share that beacon of hope. Father, people are out there looking and they need Jesus. Help us, lead us, use us, Father, in any way you can to share the gospel. Father, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.